Hi, everybody. I'm Olivia F. Scott, Associate Professor of Advertising at Loyola University, New Orleans, founder of Omerge Alliance's marketing consultancy, and the host of Behind the Ad, where we peel the layers of the media, advertising, and marketing onion back to demystify the industry. So today, we're going to talk about the survival of the media fittest, print. And let me make the term plain for you, media. A medium simply is a means to get something from one place to another. To us in communication, mediums are a means of getting messages from a source, often a brand advertiser, to an actual audience. Print media, most notably and very broadly, magazines, newspapers, direct mail and catalogs have been around since the invention of the printing press. And even before then, in Egyptian culture, using papyrus paper. So alas, today, let's talk about the fact there has been a pronounced shift from print to digital media in the first two decades of this century. According to editor and publisher and the Pew Research Center, Total estimated weekday circulation of U.S. daily newspapers was 55.8 million in 2000, but it dropped to 24.2 million by 2020. And in 2007, 591 North American publications folded, followed by 2008, approximately 525 publications folded in North America as well. Now see, I remember that time very well because from 2008 to 2009, I was the associate publisher of my beloved Vibe magazine, which I'm representing today, all right? We made it through 2008, but succumbed in 2009. And there have been numerous other casualties along the way, such as Life, Newsweek, Cosmo Girl, and so many others. But today, it's interesting that the number of magazines are maintaining and actually growing. So this whole notion of print being dead, we really want to talk about. So no matter if you are a publisher of content, a print media fan, or an advertiser who just loves the tactile nature of the medium, let's talk about how we can keep print alive. And here to join me is the one and only Robert Woodkowski. Robert is the creative director of Where You At Magazine, which is a venerable and highly demanded publication in New Orleans. Robert has been a creative professional with hands-on experience for over 25 years, delivering compelling graphics, captivating illustrations, and award-winning designs. Successfully navigating technological advances and shifting sensibilities, Robert has worked in organizations ranging from nonprofits small businesses to multinational corporations, including a Fortune 500. So I am so happy to have you with us today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Oh, you know, I love print and I have this edition. I keep where you're at, no matter where I go in the city, I always pick it up. So I was so happy to have made your acquaintance. So thank you for joining us. Well, I'm glad. It's nice to know we have a loyal reader. <laughs> you have many loyal readers. <laughs> Let's start with that. Can we just for a second, what is your circulation right now? Our circulation is over 25,000. Okay, and how has that been doing over the past several years? It's been growing over the last couple of years since uh, my tenure. Keeping in mind we're coming out of COVID, but I think people are more and more uh, interested in tactile print, I think is a good way of saying it, mm -hmm. particularly if they're new to town and they don't know where to get their resources. So they, they gravitate towards those publications that are out there to tell them what to do and where to do it. So, you know, everybody's saying print is dead, but you're here telling us you're growing actually. What are some of the elements which are driving the growth of your publication and keeping it, just maintaining it? I think there's a, a shift, as we, you were talking about earlier, uh, with a lot of media. And I think people are finding that as they get into the digital media of places and things like um, Yelp and you're going to Eater and places like that, they're coming up and seeing the same places over and over because so much of that has evolved into a pay to play and there's mm -hmm. sort of a distrust anymore. And I think that's building. Whereas if you wind up looking at a publication like this, particularly any local lifestyle entertainment magazines, Boston Magazine, New York Magazine, and including where yet, you're gonna look to see what's out there because those publications are not going down that road. They're still out there trying to bring the best information out there to keep people reading. Got you. So for those with a print publication, please enlighten us as a leader who's growing. Enlighten us regarding which industries are actually keeping print alive. 
Well, I think uh, there's so many different segments, um, and some of them are smaller than others, but they have very passionate and loyal readerships. Mm -hmm. So you definitely see uh, entertainment magazines. If you look into any you know, bookstore or pharmacy or anything like that, you'll still see magazine racks, and they're still full, even the checkout lines at grocery stores. Us Weekly still there. Um, TV Guide's still there, believe it or not. Right. And uh, all these other publications, because... There's still that point of purchase, what's going on in the world situation that people want to read, and they're, they're just voracious. And big pictures are still really sexy compared to the little tiny pictures on the phones. Do you ever see a time, in your personal opinion, in which print, print publications are going to be gone? I do not. Um, and I think it's we're in a situation of evolution, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Uh, you know, when the Betamax came out and cable TV came out and DVDs came out, everyone was long predicting the death of movie theaters. And uh, while there are less movie theaters, they've compartmentalized and evolved in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. And so there's fewer movie theaters, but each of those movie theaters have more than one screen anymore yes. than they used to. So now there's actually twice as many movie screens as there used to be. And we're streaming movies left and right. So clearly there's something happening there. I think it's a similar situation when you talk about some of the larger corporations, uh, Newsweek, Time, et cetera, that have suffered through mm -hmm. this you know, recent you know, digital age, if you will. Um, those tended to be overblown uh, and maybe slightly bloated industries. Mm. I mean, you're talking about you know, the concept of too big to fail. And right. I think no one really gauged the power and the impact of the Internet early on. And so you saw that happening. But you look at other publications like Vogue and um, Entertainment Weekly again, and you see those companies that have embraced the digital age, worked with it yep. to promote their publications. Yep. And you know, all throughout all of this, you're still in an environment where there's over 800,000 publication employees worldwide and mm. over 70,000 publications. Yep. So yes, it's pared down, um, but that's, the nature of business, and these are all still businesses. Something else I heard that you were just saying is an audience. Like Time, Newsweek, super broad-based audiences, but when you have more of a niche that you're serving, a Vogue magazine or even a Vibe magazine, which again, bad example, but they still find a way to specifically serve an audience. Can we talk about where you're at? Sure. Yet. I mean, where you're at is definitely um, very New Orleans. Okay. It's the, the people come to New Orleans, whether you're a student, whether you're visiting, or whether you're a local you know you're gonna learn something about the city you may not know. You may get an inside track. Part of the success of, of internet companies like Airbnb and places like that is that people want that immersive, in the know experience. It's, they don't want to necessarily get on Eater and find out what's the best restaurant. And, and not that they don't want that, mm. but beyond that, they wanna know, they wanna know not what's the favorite restaurant, what's your favorite restaurant. And I think that's a niche that these type of publications give you. And I think, you know, when you talk about a medium, right, where you add is a trusted medium to provide information directly to an audience. We're going to come to you as a resource of information. Absolutely. So will you talk with us about the connection between, lead, between readership and magazines folding? There's a direct correlation between magazine readership and a publication survival. How can a publication drive demand with an audience? Well, I think like anything else in terms of the evolutionary process uh, business-wise, magazines uh, that try to stand alone and not embrace the digital age are in all likelihood going to probably fail the way mm -hmm. that a online company that is only going to be online is probably going to fail okay while that doesn't seem to make sense to a lot of people if amazon wasn't worried they wouldn't have billboards in print they wouldn't have the sides of buses and billboards in print, they wouldn't have subway markers and the trains mm -hmm. because people are sitting there and they're looking up and they're absorbing it, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. Yeah. And that's all going on. And you look at the digital age, if the, again, the computer age was the end all, then there wouldn't be PC magazine or right. iMac magazine or any of those. So people are still looking for that next level of information. And they also want an objective viewpoint. They don't want to keep getting the information from the source. And I think you're seeing that more and more with, um, you know, news organizations that are largely online. 
and the mistrust that's coming behind that. Where's that coming from? What's mm -hmm. the authoritative source? People still want to know. We haven't talked about the advertising piece of this, right? So we talked about the demand from the audience, but then advertisers, what is it you feel that you do uniquely to keep advertisers choosing where you're at as a, as a publication to reach an audience over others? Well, all the publications and all the mediums that you talked about um, basically are advertising based. I mean, magazines, radio, TV all started as a way of sending out the message of what to buy to gauge shoppers. But you can't look at ads all the time, so they started adding content to make people watch it. Boxing, football, etc. cetera, uh, country western music stations. Mm -hmm. And of course, with us, uh, magazines are gonna be looking at, in case, sorry, okay. in the case of Vogue, uh, you know, fashion forward thinking. Um, and for city magazines, it's going to be what is going on and what is the history of, of what's happening now. And then how do you get clued in and connected? Um, so what's nice about that is if you know what that medium is, and I think this is why niche publications are getting so uh, are growing in mm -hmm. some ways that that is a very definitive pre-qualified buyer that's reading that magazine. Mm -hmm. So uh, to your earlier point, if you're looking at Newsweek or you're looking at a newspaper or you're looking at Time uh, and maybe even perhaps Vibe, you had a probably broad base of people that was going for sort of a, you know, darts on a, on a barn uh, motif where they're just putting an ad in and hoping to catch the right demographics. Whereas these are extremely narrow because if you have someone who is interested in the Mardi Gras parades and the culture of New Orleans, then you know that if you're a Creole restaurant that that advertising is more than likely going to work for you. This particular segment is really about the five ways that we can evolve print media and that it's not dead. That's one, having a niche. Can you give us a few others? Yeah, I think that when you're dealing with print magazines, there's a lot of opportunity. And again, it's a matter of which publications embrace that and ran with it. Mm -hmm. So if you have an article and you have a certain amount of room on a page, that's fine. But you'll notice that there are more and more publications that have QR codes or the, have website demographics that you will be able to go over and read more information. Mm. So this will give you sort of the lead, the meat of it. But if you want to get into the fine tuning and the details, that's all on the website because, of course, the website part of that article is endless. So you can add, add in recipes, you can add in details, you can add in a bunch of other things. So I think that is something that magazines can do. And, you know, in an inverse order, uh, you can find websites and stuff that intrigue you. And you see this oftentimes with newspapers. They'll give you sort of the clickbait as a lot of people refer to it yep. in terms of a headline and the first paragraph and you either click to go in and read it or you go out and buy the newspaper gotcha so a website is critical i have a couple of students here at loyola who have zines which are becoming very popular absolutely but what i'm hearing is that you have to have a digital aspect as well yeah i think you have to um have to you have to have a digital aspect as well um you know and how the advertising and stuff gets into that is obviously going to be paramount to the viability. Okay. All right. So talk to us also about events offline, whether it's, you know, not having a print publication or online. Do you all have events that you guys sponsor or you show up at? We have a lot of events. Yeah. Actually, we uh, are sponsoring. Um, uh, we have a large uh, event that we do we try to do it quarterly, but um, they're basically uh, mix-offs. Uh, we try to get the bartenders and we'll have uh, some kind of an event that uh, we had one in the spring that was the margarita mix off. Uh, we have one coming up um, in December that's going to be the Bloody Mary mix off. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have those type of things. But nice. then we also are sponsors for a lot of the activities in town. So we are a sponsor at the French Quarter Festival. We're sponsors at Jazz Fest mm -hmm. and, and many others. And because you know, that's also something that just gets your brand out there. And, you know, what a lot of people fail to either realize or think about is that when you go to these events, particularly the festivals, there's a lot of signage. All that signage is print. Print's not going anywhere. <laughs> right, right. And your brand's on there. It's it's the brand getting out there. People recognize it. People say, hey, that's that's I know that publication. And again, consciously or subconsciously, 
when they're in grocery stores, when they're walking around and they see it, it registers eventually. Okay, so just a couple of more. So it sounds like community is also something that is really important for print publications to consider being a part of because you're trying to drive demand, not only with the advertisers, but also with your audience. If you're showing up at the fried chicken festival here, mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, they're my friend. I trust them. They care about what I care about. Right, exactly. And yes, yeah, so, and we are sponsors there. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's exactly true. I mean, that community involvement and community loyalty is huge because mm -hmm. they need to see you to make sure that they're, you know, for different places and different things to understand that you're a part of the community and that what you're doing is bettering your city, your metro area, your, your community. Uh, as a whole. And for those who don't know how print partnerships work, they're very valuable for events as well. So even if it's not your own like custom event that you're creating, let's say you don't want to create the Where You're At Festival, but you do want to support the National Fried Chicken Festival, there's value to the event producers for you as a print outlet to give them support to promote the event. It saves them dollars as well. So something else is kind of wanting to make sure I point there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And sometimes, again, with that partnership, but that also affords the publication in question uh, a level of exclusivity and maybe just being able to get in for media. So whether it's you know, putting it out there so the other people can see how great that event is because that's valuable to the event because they're saying, oh, look at all the fun things that are happening. Yep. Look at all the people who are there. Hey, I know that person. They had a great time. I need to go next time. So it's not always necessarily in the moment. You're building for the future, and I think that's something that's paramount to any publication and any business is you really need to look down the road and see what's coming. <laughs> Okay, so as we conclude this lovely conversation, I could talk to you forever. You know, we're dealing with students here, and whenever I ask my students in class, have you read a magazine in the past year? Have you touched a newspaper? Like 2% of them say yes, right? Now, I think they're all using the publications digitally, but they're just not touching the actual publication, right? So what advice do you have for publishers or for those who are just interested in the platform to keep this platform alive, this actual industry alive? Well, it, it's interesting because like anything, um, you know, vinyl records went away for a while. Now they're back bigger than ever. I, mm -hmm. I see that happening even with my own 20 somethings. Uh, you they're already getting tired of being online all the time, being yeah. at work, being at school, being wherever they are, and just having to s just stare at a screen. Uh, some people are getting to that point now as they as they get older, where they're looking to d to unplug in mm -hmm. a real way, mm -hmm. but they still want to read stuff. So you're seeing people go to beaches and they're not bringing their laptops, they're bringing books, they're bringing magazines. Uh, you're on the fly and you're getting somewhere where you don't have connectivity. You want to make sure that you have something to read on an airplane or, or whatever. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. And I think, you know, again, like the previous examples of movies and records and things like that, there's always going to be a place for it. Now, how viable is up to that publisher? What is their content? Who is their audience? And how are they going to evolve it? But I don't see prints going anywhere. Uh, I think it's just going to be a support system to the Internet the way the Internet will be a support system to it. All right. Well, thank you so much. What we got today from Robert Wachowski is the five ways are having a niche, right, really having an audience for your publication, making sure that you really include the website. The website's critical. We all know that. Young people know that. But I think for publishers and many of us who are older, like AARP is the number one magazine in terms of readership with over 23 million in right. circulation, right? So it's older, though. But for this next generation, like, you got to have a companion that is a website. Three, making sure that you show up with events. You show up outside of publication. Four, you have a community element that you always show up for your community that's always going to be really appreciated and number five making sure that you are staying connected with this next generation and showing up in a way that is present for them you know it's not perhaps going to be the digital for them all the time because they're they're going to fade they're going to fatigue too sure and they're going to need this something but maybe this something looks different Perhaps it does become much smaller. Perhaps it's more of a brochure. It's something different, but not completely doing away with the publication, the Absolutely. printing of it. Anything else you'd like to share with us today? You know, I thank you for your time. I think this is uh, 
you know, the Loyola program is wonderful, and mm -hmm. I think it's really important, uh, particularly going forward, that if people are learning how to do things digitally, how to build a magazine or an e-zine, uh, don't forget the print, because even though it may not be in front of you and it may not seem imp important now, it will come up and you will cross paths somewhere in your career, and you'll have to know it. Absolutely. I'm a huge fan. I have been reading magazines since I was a little girl, and I still get Yoga Journal, I still get Shape Magazine, and I still get the New Orleans Magazine. So it's like I'm still, I still have to touch it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you again. Thank you all for joining us for this edition of Behind the Ad. I'll see you soon.